Today is the second lesson of Transformed. The first lesson covered spiritual transformation. Today we talk about physical health and physical transformation. So let's just jump right in and get started. The third book of John, chapter one, verse two, tells us, I pray that you may enjoy good health and that all may go well with you, even as your soul is getting along well. The Bible teaches us that God wants us to be uh, physically healthy. Now that makes sense. Many of you are parents, you want your children to be physically healthy. So God wants us to be healthy. So you have all the information that you have to become physically healthy. I'm not gonna uh, waste your time and teach us something that all of us know. You have to eat right, you eat less, you exercise frequently, you get enough uh, sleep, you lower your stress level. Like we all know these things. Now some of us uh, do these things, many of us don't. So what I wanna do in this session is give us the motivation to become physically healthy. Now it's not saying that you look good or feel better or live longer, although all those are really cool. Um, there's uh, spiritual implications to our physical health. So first, let's assume God wants you to do something, but you can't do it because you're out of shape. That would be a missed opportunity, um, and missed opportunities are not good. We need to uh, be prepared and ready um, with the energy to serve God. Second, our body is a gift from God. It's where we live and it's where God lives. It is our gift to God and our, our gift to ourselves when we treat our bodies with self-compassion and priority. God wants us to take care of our bodies, not because that's where we live, but also because that's where he lives. Physical health is a spiritual discipline. God lives in us um, and God works through us. Anything that God does through your life will be done through your physical body. If we are unhealthy and out of energy, um, then there are missed opportunities of how God can use us. This is gonna be a different motivation for being healthy and fit, um, but it's the motivation that we're gonna look at tonight. If you combine the spiritual motivation with looking better and feeling better and living longer, I believe many of us will experience physical transformation. So let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 12 through 20. Everything is permissible for me, um, but not everything is beneficial. Everything is permissible for me, but I will not be mastered by anything. So what's God saying here? Uh, some things aren't wrong, but they're not necessary. And your life is just too short to do things that aren't necessary. So I'm not going to uh, let anything dominate my life, nothing. Not food, not drinks, not sex, not my favorite sports team, nothing. Because whatever dominates our life is our God. Paul continues, food for the stomach and stomach for the food, but God will destroy them both. You do not exist to eat, you do not exist to drink. You are here for much more than that. It is, uh, it is so much better to eat and drink to live instead of living to eat and drink. The body is not meant for sexual immorality, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. By his power, God raised the Lord from the dead, and he will raise us also. So how is Jesus raised physically? Um, how is it that we will be raised? We will be raised physically as well. We can be a new creation both here today and forever in heaven. Do you not know that your bodies are members uh, of Christ himself? Flee from sexual immorality, all other sins a man commits are outside his body, but he who sins sexually sins against his own body. Do not you know that the, your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You are bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your body. Did you get that last sentence? Therefore, honor God with your body? That is what we're going to talk about in the next few minutes. So here are six things God says about your body. Number one, my body is God's property. Now that's not what the world teaches, but it is what the Bible says. So let's explore the possibilities. Your body is not yours because you didn't create it. God created everything. You don't own your money, you don't own your talents, you don't own your time. You do not uh, own your own body. God owns it and God loans it. You get to use it for 40 or 60 or 80 or you know, hopefully like 100 years. Uh, the psalmist, he, he tells us, you created every part of me. You put me together in my mother's womb. I am fearfully and I am wonderfully made. Everything God makes, he makes for a purpose. 
I'm still trying to figure out how this one applies to cats, but I'm trusting God on this one. God is the lender of your body. You are the borrower. I have a friend uh, who travels once in a while, and he lets me use this little sports car convertible when he's uh, gone. Now, how do you think I treat this car? Well, I treat it well. I treat it very well. It's not mine. It's his. There has never been a time when I've given the car back without it being spotless and, and full of gas. Now, wouldn't it be really cool if we treated our, uh, if we treated our bodies like this? Spotless and full of gas. Now, number two, God expects me to manage my body. I'm not the owner. What I am is the manager. We are stewards. We are caretakers. Um, one of our jobs as, as managers is to protect. So what Paul says, I will not be mastered by anything. Nothing will master our body. Not television, um, not food, not the internet, not sex, not drugs, not alcohol, not stress, not tobacco. None of these things, um, none of these things will um, master our body. Now another job of the manager is to be in control. Um, to be in control, what goes in, you control the activity. At times, the manager uh, knows things need to be shut down for a while. Rest and recovery will be essential. God gives you the task of managing your body. So be wise, be disciplined, create good habits, set and keep uh, healthy boundaries. Manage your body very well. Now, number three, my body will be resurrected after I die. Here on earth is your body version 1.0. Your body in heaven will be version 2.0. In our broken uh, world, there, there is so much beauty. Mountains and oceans, clouds and colors, men, women, and children. In heaven, which is perfect, only beauty will exist. By his power, God raised the Lord from the dead, and he will raise us also. Your body is important because it will be yours forever. The God who created you is more than enough, uh, more than powerful enough to recreate you, both in this world and the world to come. Number four, my body is connected to the body of Christ. You may not have thought about this before, but your body, not just your soul, is connected to the body of Christ. The Bible says, do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ himself? Jesus gave his body for you, and he wants you to honor him with your body. How we treat our body is a reflection of the body of Christ. Number five, the Holy Spirit lives in my body. God puts his Holy Spirit in your body. Now, isn't that really cool? I, I see this in people all the time, and it, it's so beautiful. The smiles and the kindness and the encouragement and the forgiveness, the service, the unselfish love. Paul writes, do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? God puts his residence in you. You uh, become a temple of God. The Bible says, don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple and God's spirit lives in you? God's temple is sacred and you are that temple. Don't you think you'd treat your body differently if uh, daily we remembered that we are a temple of God? God's temple is sacred and therefore uh, your body is sacred. Through scriptures, God has always hung out somewhere here on planet Earth. First, it was in the tabernacle. It was a big tent that God gave Moses uh, the specifications to build. Then, God later gave David instructions uh, to build a temple, and David built that temple. Where does God dwell today? Um, in you and in me. Second Corinthians says that you're God's dwelling place on earth. We are the temple of the living God. So let's say you're walking down the street and you see somebody vandalizing a church. Maybe they're breaking a window or painting graffiti. What would you do? Well, you get angry, right? You'd probably call the police or maybe you'd try to, try to stop them. Well, some of us are vandalizing our bodies and we don't think twice about it. We don't get enough sleep or eat enough nutrition. We get too much junk food and, and way too much stress. Treat your body remembering that it is God's temple. Number six, Jesus bought my body on the cross. Jesus didn't just pay the ransom for your soul. He paid the, uh, the ransom for your body as well. The Bible says that you are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your body. If you want to know how much you're loved by God, think about the cross. In the pain and agony, Jesus stretched out his arms like this, and he showed you how much 
He loves you. Jesus said he would rather die than live without you. He paid the ultimate price so that we can have abundant and eternal life. So treating our bodies well is the right thing to do and it is the best thing to do. Romans says, I urge you brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. One act of worship is to offer our bodies to God, um, to take care of yourself for his purposes and his glory. Prepare yourself uh, to serve God better. You can't serve God without a body. In John chapter 5, Jesus met a man who had been sick for 38 years. He went up to the man and asked him, do you want to be well? So this guy has been sick for almost four decades, and Jesus asked him, do you want to be well? That's kind of a silly question, right? Who wouldn't want to be well, especially after 38 years of sickness? Well, Jesus asked us the same question as well. Do you want to get well? You haven't been feeling the best uh, for a while, some of you. Um, maybe it's been weeks or months or years, or maybe even for you it's been decades. Do you want to get well? A year from now, do you want to be in better shape than you are today? A month from now, do you want to have uh, more energy than you have today? Or are you going to continue with your current patterns? So during your discussion time, I want you to talk about one step that will get you healthier. One step that will start the process of physical transformation in your life. Now, I'm not asking you to change everything. I'm encouraging you to change one thing. You know, talk about what, what that might be. Um, maybe you're going to download an app and start counting calories, or maybe you'll go to bed at a certain time, or, or maybe you'll exercise four times a week for 45 minutes. Maybe you'll not eat after dinner, or maybe you'll go for a walk around your neighborhood every night. Build some accountability into uh, this discussion because this is essential stuff. God wants you to be physically healthy so that you can accomplish great things for his kingdom. I want to repeat what I said last week because it's important. The most important part of your small group experience has not happened yet. It is about ready to happen. It is not about my teaching, it is about the small group discussion. So I encourage you to listen to the stories and experiences of others. I encourage you to share your uh, stories and experiences. What I want you to do is ask really good questions. I want you to be real and authentic um, and support each other. Encourage one another, uh, hold each other accountable for uh, transformations. And, and really what we're going to do is we're going to grow in our relationship with God and each other. So I encourage you tonight to have a great discussion.